es Fortuñol. Pero hablo de vaga. Hablo muy lento. Sí. sí es, bueno. es bueno, sí. Bueno. Lo digo en inglés si no lo comprenden, pero adoro el español y espero que este acento colombiano es útil para ustedes. Mejor que el argentino. But certainly I will translate it for you, like each slide. So the whole idea to talk about opportunities y la idea de hablar de oportunidades es reconocer que Pueden existir oportunidades, pero también es importante pensar en el entorno. Y yo quisiera hacerles la invitación por un solo momento en toda la conferencia que cierren los ojos. Let's close our eyes and let's think about how has been our trajectory professionally. ¿Cuántos éramos en casa hombres y mujeres? Let's think about how many siblings do we have at home uh, uh, brothers and sisters? Let's think about now how was this first experience at the school? Como fue la primera experiencia en el colegio de primaria? Ya, ya, tranquilo. Como fue esa experiencia en Secundaria, piénsenlo. ¿Cómo fue en la universidad? Let's think about now the university classroom. How is in the work environment right now? For people who are teaching, how is the distribution in a classroom? Yeah, it just disappeared for, yeah, that was a problem. And uh, so I hope you have the numbers in your mind. I'm gonna share with you my numbers. This is maths. And this is, this is the power of data. Él lo va a lograr. Men are so smart sometimes, and we need them too. <laughs> so this is my data. So I come from a family from three daughters and three brothers. Entré a un colegio femenino que éramos 40-0. Hice un pregrado en ingeniería eléctrica que éramos 10-38. Hice un pregrado en física que éramos 314, una maestría en ingeniería eléctrica 215, un PhD en física 212, trabajo en un departamento que somos 218, eh, tengo un grupo de investigación que somos 15 y cuando voy a dictar mis clases somos... Eh, yo creo que aquí lo ven, 4.50, 5.50, 4.12, 8.15 y 12.50. Esta reflexión, this is something to think about, because sometimes at home we find an equity environment, but as soon as you are introduced in the education system, you are in an equality system either because you are surrounded by a different gender, because you are transferring knowledge to an opposite gender, which is stronger in number than the, the, the minority gender. That in my case, working as an electronic engineer is uh, always women. So when you look at those numbers, you know that you have to do something. So it's either being the best scientist or is working together to change this situation and change the numbers. This is the reason why I like to come up with some opportunities. 
And uh, so for some of you, it will be like um, opportunities for fellowships. For other ones, there will be opportunities to participate in scholarships. And I'm sorry if you already know about these programs. Uh, these are the current programs that are open. Uh, this is industrial physics in emerging economies. This is a great, great effort and initiative that was created by the American Institute of Physics. Long time ago, the first conference was organized in Sao Paulo. Last year, it was organized in San Diego, and it's, it's gonna, there's going to be another conference coming up. The whole idea of this conference is opportunities for science in today's economy environment. So it's connecting the industry and connecting the academia to create some specific solutions that will be uh, profitable for both sides. Next one, which is a really good program, I strongly recommend, I suggested to several of my students, is called the H2020 program. In that 2020 program, the University of Copenhagen has opened 25 positions within the doctoral program, which is called talent at the Faculty of Science. Several universities in Europe are creating similar programs. So if you are interested, this is open to all Latin America. And it covers a wide range of fields. Si vemos ahí están todas las de biología, las de ciencias, está física, cosmología, y empiezan a aparecer algunas que me parecen muy interesantes, ciencias cuánticas y tecnología cuántica, que lo que se espera es que sea un programa que apoye al desarrollo de la industria, especialmente en las áreas de electrónica. Y hay otras que comienzan a tomar también fuerza, que es todo lo que es economía y desarrollo global, pero relacionado a la ciencia. Entonces, si les interesa, este es el website donde pueden encontrar toda la información del programa. Estos programas generalmente están abiertos para que apliquen en los segundos semestres de cada año cuando las universidades tienen ese funding. I can give a copy to the ICT officers here so they can also show these slides after the conference. Ah, sí. Okay. Bueno, se pasa. A mí me gusta moverme. <laughs> this is another great website, which is called brightrecruits.com. It's science careers. And um, the good thing about this one is you find like um, courses for postgraduate students, but also scholarships and jobs for uh, postdocs and faculty. Entonces, en esta me, me parece muy interesante que ustedes la, la exploren. Se puede generar el perfil de cada persona y lo contactan a uno, yo ya lo he hecho con los estudiantes, eh, y también aparece toda una serie de listas por eh, empleos eh, para postdocs y también scholarship para estudiantes, se la recomiendo bastante. La siguiente es Physics Today Jobs, y yo sé que a veces suena que esto fuera solo física, créanme que no, aquí hay ciencias biológicas, hay geociencias, Existe ciencia de datos, que para mí es la que nos está uniendo a todos desde las disciplinas convencionales. La ciencia de datos o la ingeniería de datos es un nuevo movimiento que está trayendo mucha atención y ahí lo van a encontrar. Ustedes pueden colocar ahí su hoja de vida, también en esta no, no genera usted un perfil, pero coloca su hoja de vida y aparece todo el listado de de empleos y ofertas de scholarships. Entonces, esa es otra que es muy buena que la puedan explorar. Aquí hay tres, no sé si las han explorado antes, está Nature Jobs, y Nature Jobs, eh, lo interesante de esto es que lo ofrece por diferentes regiones y disciplinas de las que cubre Nature. Y aquí, con estos websites, es importante que van a escuchar de Silvina también el proyecto de Gender Gap, y en ese proyecto de Gender Gap, que son los datos que va a sacar Ixu, nos va a decir cuáles son los salarios que existen por región. So salaries for each region. Working in science is going to come out with the data from the Gender Gap project that is going to be released in the first week of November by Ixu. Uh, Silvina will have all the information. And uh, for all of you who would like to uh, move from one continent to another one, I think it's important to get to know that there are differences in salaries. And this is the first time that a report come out with data that was gathered by different units in each region. 
Ese es muy importante que lo tengan en cuenta. Y el otro, en el caso de las que les encante el ciencia de materiales, 3M ha estado sacando una serie de ofertas también para internships, pasantías y para empleos dentro de sus oficinas en Latinoamérica. New Scientist Jobs, no sé cuántos de ustedes leen New Scientist, si les gusta o no les gusta, lo han visto. New Scientist es una journal que tiene una parte muy fuerte en ciencias, pero también en divulgación científica. Hablamos de un movimiento en la región que se llama Ciudadanos Informados en Ciencia y Tecnología. Los artículos que ellos tienen son bastante relevantes y también tienen el, el website listo para mirar perfiles de candidatos, quienes han empleado candidatos en ciencias antes eh, y aparece toda la lista de trabajos eh, que se está sacando, no solamente en la academia, sino en la industria. Yo vengo de Colombia y nosotros utilizamos casi la mayoría de estos websites para buscar y reclutar personas. Entonces me parece interesante que los conozcan. El otro es en Inglaterra, jobsac.com, que es, 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 está enfocado más a postdocs, pero postdocs que van de toda la región. Entonces eso es interesante si lo pueden mirar. Para los que trabajan en ciencia de materiales o materia condensada, ASME tiene un Job Board Career Center, que además de sacar la lista de empleos, uno puede hacer una conexión con un mentor o un tutor de las empresas y universidades que han sacado esos empleos para que le ayude, digamos, a hacer eh, un empoderamiento en su práctica profesional. Y el otro que se volvió importante, lo voy a mencionar como desde la ingeniería eléctrica, pero ahora en física y en química nos hemos unido, que es la IEEE, que tiene también su job site, donde le recomiendo colocar el resumen. Y lo interesante de estos dos es que además permite que las asociaciones paguen dinero para atraer gente en conferencias invitada, completamente cubierto por las sociedades. Entonces, en esas dos se las voy a recomendar bastante. La siguiente es una muy interesante que no sé si la han escuchado. I, I always suggest to my students, female students, um, who are interested in pursue a postgraduate study, that they will apply to this one. This is a very well-paid scholarship by Schlumberger Foundation. El programa se llama Role Models for the Next Generation. Y en este momento está abierto. La idea es, y van a ver, somos elegibles. Yo revisé Brasil y toda la región es elegible. Y la idea que ellos tienen es apoyar modelos para mejorar el balance de género y el nivel que existe dentro de las universidades para mujeres jóvenes. Esta, lamento a los colegas hombres que están acá, es exclusivamente para mujeres. Es una de las becas mejor pagas que existe y es donde quiera la persona que aplica ir. Esa es bien interesante, les coloqué acá. Está abierto hasta el 7 de noviembre para los fellowships del 2020. Entonces, si tienen interés, les, les pido el favor que, que a, apliquen. En esta requieren que alguna persona de sus universidades o unidades les ayude con las cartas de recomendación en eso es una cosa que sí, siempre hace parte de una aplicación y parece fácil, pero yo creo que hay que hacerlo con mucha antelación porque what happens normally with the references, and I have talked to people in MIT, Harvard, and top schools in UK, is that professors have a limited time. And when they are asked to write 20 references, sometimes the practice is just to copy some phrases from one reference to another one. But this is an electronic platform. So actually they can look at the name of the professor and they know how many, how many times or how many references have used the same terms. Reference have to be personal. And this is a way of getting to know humans, the mentor human and the student human. And if the mentor human doesn't know specific details of the student, Unfortunately, references are one of the negative points to evaluate an application. So if you have 20 copies of the same reference for 
20 different people, your application is rejected. It doesn't matter how good you are. Entonces, hay que tener en cuenta que esos son elementos que hay que pedirlos con tiempo. Esta es otra excelente oportunidad. No sé si la conocen, Graduate Women International, es GWI. Aquí aparecen los países que están afiliados. Algunos de los países que están en color azul claro, como Colombia y Brasil, aún no tenemos oficinas. O sea que lo traigo acá porque lo que necesitamos es grupos de personas que quieran generar trabajo colectivo para que se genere la oficina. Entonces, cuando ustedes viajan a otros países y están en la parte norte o están en Argentina, en Bolivia, ahí existen las oficinas y se abren becas cada dos años de posgrado en áreas específicas, sean ciencias puras, ciencias biológicas, ciencias de la tierra, ciencias químicas. Entonces, me parece que en esta la quiero mencionar por dos razones. ¿Quiénes estarían interesadas en apoyar a que se genere el grupo acá? ¿O quiénes estarían interesadas en buscar las becas? Esta está dirigida para que, eh, y es una de las que me encanta mencionar, porque en las otras existen barreras de edad. Entonces, una persona ya a mi edad, por ejemplo, yo no podría aplicar a ninguna beca de doctorado. En esta es para senior students. Entonces, es muy interesante cuando uno tiene algún nivel de posgrado que quiere mejorar, se puede hacer con esta, pero también cuando hay crisis in the career, they have a specific fellowships for people who can sit down and think over what to do next. No, just having a PhD doesn't guarantee that you're going to be successful in science. So this is a great program that allows senior professors to think over about their careers. And it's also important to work in challenges, technology and science challenges that are open up every year. This is a community in UK, and in, it's an European group also. Y trabajan en cómo hacer retos, a veces en energía y a veces en reciclaje de materiales. El último fue en plastic waste y es cómo se puede reducir el plástico en todas las esferas que ustedes están viendo ahí de trabajo en una ciudad. Entonces, para los que les guste trabajar en grupo y quieren poner la ciencia al servicio de la ciudadanía, este es un excelente programa. Ya está abierto el del 2020 si lo quieren revisar. Otro programa que va para, ciencia eh, para ciudadanía científica es Meet Solvers. Eh, hemos trabajado en este programa desde Ingenieros Sin Fronteras, Engineers Without Borders. This year we submitted a proposal to connect uh, small businesses in rural areas uh, to get to know what is the uh, benefits and risk of their products. And that was one of the winners in this competition. I strongly suggest to the students and faculty in Latin America to participate. So the, the tackling of the problems are focused on a circular economy, community driving innovation, early childhood development, and healthy cities. This is open between March to July. And then if you get selected in the short list, you are invited to come to MIT and to share Uh, spaces and information with the other groups from different parts of the globe. Esta me parece muy interesante. También las empresas de la región están generando un listado de problemas de la región y buscan personas que solucionen esos problemas con base científica. Entonces, eh, muy recomendado para todos los que les interese eso. Y cuando dos o más mujeres se reúnen, el diablo mira, escucha, se sienta y aprende. Y creo que es importante decir que esto fue en 1890, esto fue cuando comenzamos los talleres, y la pregunta es, ¿qué más vamos a construir? Que es la invitación con ustedes, ¿no? Entonces, des en cuenta la diferencia que hay entre estas y estas mujeres de acá, ¿sí la ven, Clara? Algunas tenían la falda y se la levantaron para que otras hoy andemos en pantalón. Y este voy a hacer es un, un ejemplo que estamos trabajando en Colombia, porque el entorno es importante. Este es el billete de 10 mil pesos en Colombia, que muchas mujeres comenzamos a hablar con el director del Banco de la República para que se hiciera reconocimiento 
en los billetes, no solamente de los hombres en la historia, los que ya han muerto, sino mujeres que han hecho cambios en ciencia y educación. Ella es Virginia Gutiérrez, es una, la llamamos científica social, fue la primera mujer que en Colombia decidió que se estudiaban las familias en cada región y estableció los temas que eran importantes para el desarrollo de la economía en esa región basada en esa familia. Hoy todo lo que ella estudió hace parte del Plan Nacional de Desarrollo en Colombia. Y hace aproximadamente ocho años se logró convencer al director del Banco de la República para que una científica social fuera parte de nuestra vida cotidiana. Entonces, aquí estaba averiguando con ustedes cuál había y la única que encontré, discúlpenme, encontré ella. Cien cruceros, no sé si sabe, alguien me cuenta quién es. Cecilia Meret. ¿Y quién es Cecilia Meret? Es una escritora, una escritora. Eso. Cecilia Meret, es una escritora. ¿Y qué escribías? ¿Qué? Literatura, no era, una, no era una persona política, era una persona literaria de la clase superior de Brasil. Entonces, hay un, no, no, no fue una lucha para tener Cecilia Meirelles ahí, fue más una cuestión política. Pero necesitamos si le... tener... ¡A Marcia! No, ah. queremos, necesitamos tener algunas personas de la ciencia con una nota. Exacto, sí, entonces la invitación, mostrando este ejemplo en Colombia y seguramente que en la región hay otros, es ver cómo ustedes se motivan para que lo que estamos haciendo ojalá le dé visibilidad a algunas de nosotras. ¿Sí? Eso era lo que yo tenía en oportunidades. No sé si alguien tiene alguna pregunta, comentario. ¿Don? Sí, Marcia. Yo tengo un pequeño, pequeño advertisement para hacer. Uh, recientemente, yo y una docente de California, de la ingeniería eléctrica de UCLA, creamos en LinkedIn una, un grupo que llamamos North and South, Scientist Networking, con la idea de juntar cientistas del hemisferio norte con científicos jóvenes, particularmente del hemisferio sur, de donde tenemos tantos problemas, para tener apoyo, contactos para gente joven. Porque yo comprendí que personas jóvenes a mucho tiempo como yo sobreviven en todos los cuartos de beca. ¿Cómo se llama? No, no es en Facebook, es en LinkedIn. Ah, bueno, ya lo voy a decir. Es un grupo en LinkedIn. Que, que no, eh, no, no es sí. en, 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 en Facebook. Igual pero la idea, estamos empezando, empezamos hace dos semanas, pero la idea es tener contactos. Ella busca contactos de ahí para crecer el grupo. Y yo estoy haciendo propaganda para hacernos de acá. Y vamos a ayudarnos porque personas correctas con la idea de diversidad y que tengan una carrera para la frente, para juntos y juntas vencermos esta pelea contra la diversidad, contra el medio ambiente, contra la ciencia. Y solamente vamos a poder hacer esto juntos y juntas. Y aquí está la página de Facebook, si quieren ir colocando información. Entonces, está también el Twitter, no se les olvide, y ya coloco lo del link. link. Sí. ¿Listo? ¿Llegó? So, we are having a problem because the person who is in charge of the activity now hasn't showed up. But anyway… Eh, ¿Qué les llena acá? Sí, ah, pero pongo… Ah, lo pongo mi... acá. Ya lo pongo acá. So I'm going to tell you about other initiatives we have. And okay. So a, we have a project that is called the Gender Gap 
in science projects. And we've been doing, it's a joint project of many scientific unions. And we ran a global survey of scientists that was open last year, and we are now collecting the data. Uh, we also have a database of good practices. And then, so it's a, the global survey, the database of good practices, and also a study of publication patterns discriminated by gender. And, and so in preparation for this, let me, let me go. Yeah. Uh, mm. So in preparation for this, we, we, uh, we organized uh, a Latin America, no. Uh, we have a web page. Let me see. Science. Let me get my computer and I'm going to show you because we have a web page that is specific on Latin America and we have collected a bunch of initiatives at the uh, level of Latin America that I wanted to share with you. So. ¿Quieres ir haciendo alguna cosa mientras yo busco? No, yo creo que esperemos ahí. Lo que quiero, si es que acá no está cogiendo todas las... ¿Cómo? Acá no está cogiendo... Probablemente podemos ver si te ponemos un libro. Aquí lo pueden ver. Okay, yes, as a result of a workshop we have in Colombia last year, we published a book uh, we just wrote for uh, some institutions. We are not selling copies, sorry, but you can download it. I think Silvina is going to show the link so you can download the PFD version. In any case, we are going to leave one uh, printed copy here on the desk if you want to check it out, see, there are very, very interesting um, um, data, and also we try to collect experiences from different countries, from different areas, so you can get some ideas and uh, do your own programs at your institutions or at your countries. So you can see the book. I'm going to leave it here. Sorry, we only have one copy for this, and we are going also to uh, give some copies to different institutions here in Brazil, so um, hopefully you, will, you can find one in your institution. Yeah. So uh, we have this site. Um, let me see if you can see. Can you see the, yeah, over there. We are, I have it in Argentina. So it's gender gap in science, Latin America. And we've been collecting a initiatives that they are not only in Latin America, that they are everywhere in the world. Uh, they are different types of, of initiatives to try to reduce the gender gap in the, mostly in academy and in scientific activities. And some schemes that are very interesting that I very much would like to think whether we could have something similar in our region is this Athena Swan Charter and Project Juno. Project Juno is for physics departments only. Athena Swan is for all STEM areas. 
And basically what they have is a aims, goals, to achieve a more diverse environment. They focus on gender equity, basically. And so the institutions that, and so the, the project certifies institutions that make an effort to improve gender equity. And so the, uh, the institutions say, or make a presentation to Project Juno saying, uh, we are planning to do this and that, so they have to discuss in their own institutions how to achieve the goals of the whole project. And once uh, they submit the proposal to Project Juno, then Project Juno evaluates that, sends people to the institution, talks to the people of the institution, and then uh, gives a certificate. And there are different levels of certificate. There is a, an entry level of certificate, and then you kind of have a hierarchy of, uh, of how you are considered within the project. And, and the Athena Swan is similar to that, and some funding ag agencies in the, uh, in the UK require that the institutions be certified by the Athena Swan thing to be able to apply for funds. So that now some uh, funding agencies require that institutions have in place some program to achieve a more equitable workplace environment so that uh, they can get money to do any kind of research. And then, so in this, in this site, you have links to all these initiatives. And the uh, NSF Advanced Program is another interesting thing, which gives money to generate proposals on how to change your institution. This is a very interesting approach. Then there are, here you have many links to initiatives related to gender violence and sexual harassment. In particular, the International Union of Pure and Applied Physics now a, requires that at all the sponsored conferences, there are people appointed to handle uh, situations of harassment. So if you go to a conference and you experience any sort of harassment, you know that there is an officer that has been appointed by the conference organizers that you could go to to ask to try to solve the problem. Initially, the idea was that maybe the person harassing could be eventually be expelled from the conference, but then that has the certain problems with the legal system of the country where the, uh, the conference is being held. So basically, it's try to come to terms to make the whole environment less aggressive and, and less violent. And well, and then in Argentina, at least, there, there have been a bunch of uh, initiatives, they are called protocols that have been approved at most national universities, I would say, on how to handle situations of violence, how to uh, funnel the uh, denunciations and the procedure that gives the right of defense to the person accused, and there are different levels of handling the whole situation and keeping um, not making public the whole thing, so that there is a protocol on how to act on these on these things. Um, anyway, so then CNPK has this Programa Mulher y Ciencia, and and there are various programs to try to to make a more equitable thing. Then. There are all a, also links to things about gender bias, which is a, something that is very hard to, to get rid of because it's a ways in which you don't realize and in, in an unconscious way, immediately you catalog the person, you put it in a certain category that is very much related to the gender that you perceive of the person. And, and so there have been some studies that show that 
identical CVs submitted to institutions but with different first names, like a first name that is a female or a man, they receive different numbers of uh, proposals higher. I mean, the men, there was this experiment that was done in the US in 2012, it was published, and they submitted 120 CVs identical. Half of them had the name Jocelyn, the other half had the name John, and John received better uh, offers, more job offers, better salaries, more offers of mentoring, and Jocelyn received fewer of them. And that was only based on the first name because there was no personal interaction. And the people who did, I mean, made this different type of uh, offers to the two applicants, they were equally likely to have this unconscious bias, women and men faculty. So it's not just that men have these biases, we all have these biases. So it's very important to try to maybe have people trained to be on committees that could look there, be watching, that there are no these, uh, unconscious discriminations and that could, I don't know, solve what's going on. And well, then there are statements and charters and, and there are many, uh, many of the, uh, of the scientific unions or scientific associations that have gender groups, and so we have the links to all of these to all of these things. Um, there is a very interesting network, Red Mexitec, that Lilia is in charge of now in Mexico. I don't know if you want to say a few words about it, the kind of things that you've been doing. Okay, so um, our National Council of Science um, used to have a program of supporting networks. Um, with the change of government, we don't know exactly what is going to happen. But anyway, there are 90 networks uh, already registered. Some, are the, some of them have been rejected because some others have been rejected because they did not accomplish all the requirements. Our network now has 90, 90 members, um, although not of, all of them are very active. Anyway, uh, we have uh, one of the most interesting uh, things about our network is that uh, it's a multidisciplinary network, and uh, mainly the main groups are um, sociologists and physicists. I don't know why, but uh, we are a very uh, big group in that uh, network. And it's uh, very interesting because we are working to the, together on doing some activities, doing theory, collecting data, and uh, publishing books, organizing, organizing several conferences and meetings. Next week we have our uh, annual meeting and Previous to this uh, meeting, we have a colloquium uh, with different uh, invited uh, speakers, one from Spain, another one from Argentina, and then uh, also national speakers, and we have invited also young students to attend this meeting. So uh, I found this experience very, very um, interesting, very um, instructive, the interaction between social scientists and physicists and mathematicians has been very, very interesting. At the beginning, the discussions were about citations, uh, publishing in English, the importance of uh, doing research, international research, and things like that. But finally, we found the, uh, the way to collaborate uh, and find common problems uh, to tackle, and also we are working on uh, different activities like a popularization with a perspective, uh, with a gender perspective, for example, and something that we do, do somehow empirically, because we are physicists, we are uh, mathematicians or biologists, we don't are not, we are we don't know the theory about gender, 
social science, for example, and then they, we find support when we talk uh, with them, with our co uh, social scientists, uh, about how to do this, how to uh, prepare a survey, for example. Uh, um, so this is a very, very uh, important, I think, uh, issue when we do a network, trying to understand, understand the other, to listen to them, and not try to impose our point of view, but instead uh, listen carefully and try to find uh, common problems and common solutions for them. I don't know if something else can I say. Uh, we have a website, and uh, the books are some other manuals or handbooks. Uh, you can find them and download it for free. So I, I don't know if one of, any of you wants to share about some activities that you are involved in that you would like to, that we could, I don't know, portray somehow. Hi, uh, I don't know, maybe I talk in English and in Spanish. Um, we in La Plata, uh, are making a lot of activities. Um, for example, one of them is uh, with the um, um, a commission uh, of genders in in the Faculty of Science. Uh, we make um, I don't know an in on a square of the faculty a monument of Loana Berkins. Uh, Loana Berkins was. Um, uh, how can I say, was an, an activity, a trans activity. Eh, bueno, fue una activista trans que luchó mucho por los derechos trans y, y en la comunidad de, de exactas de, de, de La Plata eh, decidimos que, o sea, la, la, eh, la comisión decidió que era bueno eh, hacer una, un monumento a Loana y se hizo ahí en la Facultad de Ciencias Exactas. Eh, fue un, un lindo evento porque participó toda la comunidad, todas las autoridades. Eh, se pasó un discurso de Loana donde decía que era necesario, eh, eh, digamos, que las, eh, otras, otros cuerpos, otras identidades puedan ingresar en la facultad y que en, en, en la medida en que otras personas pudieran realmente ingresar en el sistema científico, sería el, un, un cambio ¿no? realmente en la sociedad. Eh, That was a real, real important thing to us. It was this year, uh, at, at the beginning of the year. Um, then uh, we, I, I participate three years uh, consecutive in the, um, uh, uh, the entrance course of the, 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 at, the, at the faculty. And we made a, a, like a workshop day uh, about gender thing, uh, gender stuff. Um, y la, las dos primeras actividades eh, estuvieron que ver con cuestiones de género y con cuestiones de educación popular. La idea era poder poner, eh, entrar a hacer entrar la otra dimensión, que es lo corporal también, para que salga la emocionalidad y empezar a, a, a trabajar las cosas que son necesarias para hacer una transformación. Tratamos temas como, bueno género en general de distintas barreras. Nosotros también hablamos de un feminismo interseccional eh, que va desde, con las distintas variantes en, en lo que es la clase, lo que es bueno, eh, la edad, eh, el género, un montón de cosas. ¿no? Eh, y, y hablamos temas como el aborto, hicimos eh, un, una ronda donde dijimos, donde, o sea, hicimos actividades donde las personas tuvieran que poner el cuerpo. Y fue, fue una discusión, fue, es un evento fuerte porque son para las personas que ingresan, digamos, tanto los chicos como de cualquier edad que ingresen. Eh, y después de eso discutimos los temas y después hubieron personas que expusieron sobre eh, lo que es eh, género, digamos, lo que, donde conceptualizaron todas las problemáticas. Eh, so, um, bueno, esas son unas pequeñas cosas que estamos haciendo nosotros ellos. So maybe I have a question for Katemari. 
uh, because one thing that I, I, I think I mentioned as, at some point, which is we've been trying to do some affirmative actions or something related to women. And, but now the, the, very st the definition of gender and is more self-perceived somehow and it's fluid, as you said. So how, what could you do? Can you do some affirmative action in this world that gender is self-perceived? It's not just what the, uh, I mean, for example, we had, at some point, we have these uh, rules that for some conferences, you need at least a certain percentage of women invited or something. But then, what should you do? You, you decide who are women or is it, I, I don't know exactly how to combine all these things. Um, I don't know, maybe we can, in, in terms of affirmative action, use the self-identification, people who identify as women, and maybe have um, a writing, a text that says something in a broader sense. So uh, women and trans people, for example, or no, not women and trans people, because then you're saying that trans people may not be women. Yeah, no, that's wrong. Um, but you, you can use maybe gender and sexual minorities. But if you use gender and sexual minorities, the problem is then you have just gay men. That's what happens. Um, so it's tricky. Yeah, yeah I, w I would say. Uh, but it's tricky. Uh, but there is this resource I may look and put on the, in the Facebook group. Um, there is this resource that I always use when I'm like sort of in doubt uh, about language, which is from the, I'm not going to remember the, the website right now, but it's something with uh, it's the human rights um, something. And they have like a guideline for using um, inclusive language. Uh, when in, in regards to gender and sexual minorities. And I find it very helpful. Uh, so that is something that might help to guide the writing because that's something very important, uh, how we write things. Uh, and so sometimes I'm like afraid of doing something that might be, um, might not be inclusive. Then I look for this source because I, I'm, I'm much better nowadays, but I still it's, uh, I still don't know that much. So it's always good to to check with uh, a good and, and in this case it's, it's a one good source of a very inclusive material. Yeah, but yeah. Okay. So what I think we are going to do is a shift and start a poster session now a little earlier, and so because this person is not answering the phone, and I would say, not well, coming. she's not coming, okay. I'm very sorry about this, very, very sorry. But it is shift in a half an hour, we have more a half an hour to the... The, the breakout the sessions, breakout which is... The breakout sessions, that's where the world will go on fire. So the end of the party, we are going to propose action. Half an hour more there will be quite useful. Okay, so we, we move to the... So since we have time, let me just say one thing. I posted uh, in the Facebook group, but there is this um, grant from APS, the American Physical Society, that is open for people all over the world. And you can uh, ask for a fund, uh, for funding for um, either creating a new group in your institution or uh, helping your group, so it's for women in physics. Sorry, the non-physics people, but it's for uh, women in physics, and and that's it. And there are lots of possibilities of activities that you can you can do. Uh, it's not like you have like social activities or meetups or whatever. There are lots of stuff, and you don't need to be an APS um, associated. So. You, you can check, the, the link is over there, and it's open now, the, the application for these funds. Okay, so 
Marcia was suggesting that if you become a, I don't know, friends or whatever with the Facebook group, you can, it's public. I think everybody can post anything, Alba. So if you can, if you know of these initiatives and want to put links, put them there so that we, we have all access to those links. So we now move to the poster session and, and then we will have a longer breakout session, I guess. Okay, thank you. Thank you.